Hey, uh, this is Stacia, and we are going to play a training game on chess.com, and then hopefully uh, do some good analysis on it at the end, um, which is what I'm mainly interested in. <laughs> but I like playing a game so that I can uh, have all my thoughts fresh in my head, and then analyze. So let's do it. Fifteen ten. Yeah, my blitz rating is seventeen forty two. That's pretty good for me. But that's kind of made me afraid to play Blitz because <laughs> I'm like, I don't want my rating to go back down. Um, which is, of course, not the right approach. The longer I refuse to play, um, the higher the chance that I won't be able to keep that rating. Wow, did my voice just crack? Amazing. Okay. not feeling super great today. I think I am slightly sick or something. I have a sore throat, but it's not bad at all. I feel mostly good. Um, here we go. So we're playing Stuckfish. <laughs> Stuckfish, nice one. Um, should I play D4? I mean, I never play it. No, I want to play E4. I've got the King's Island open coming up very soon. So let's play my actual repertoire, which I'll probably be using. That way, anything I learn that's fresh, ooh, especially in Smithmore Gambit, will be in my mind. Wow, I get like a Smithmore Gambit every time I play on chess.com, I swear. Um, okay, let's just uh, play normal. I'm playing against Stuckfish. Oh no. From Uruguay. Interesting. I think Uruguay is in Africa, right? Oh, South America, actually. A6 right now. I think it's playable. I've looked at this before. Um, okay, so I'll just play this. I don't think I can do anything yet. Okay, now e6. Hmm. Yeah, I don't really see any. Uh, I mean, I could possibly play e5 here, but I doubt it's good. I think after e5, knight g to e7 would be the way to go. And then after here, they might even be able to play f6. No, maybe not, but they could... Um, I could play h6. Yeah, I don't think it's any good. I'm just going to castle. I have to remember to calculate in critical positions. This is rapid chess. Okay, I think that moves good. Um, this is the Shevenigan pawn structure. which always calls for the, the plan queen e2, rook d1. So I'll just play it. Ooh, bishop d7. Okay, that moves a little different than normal. So pressuring the d file makes a lot of sense now because that pawn is attacked. And I think the downside of this move is just that the queen is no longer protecting that pawn. So let's just put pressure there immediately. And um, the downside is e5 and also knight to e5 aren't as strong anymore. But I know there's ways to take advantage. What those ways are, I'm not sure. Okay, so I'm pretty much out of theory now. Time to think for myself, a scary proposition. Um... I really think knight d5 is just a loser here. It's a, it's a normal more sacrifice, but like, what am I getting out of this? Just knight e5 maybe, and I usually want to do that if I can play something like d6, but the pawn's on d6, so I don't like it. Um, 
So I want to think about this bishop. It's not going here. So what does that mean? It means this square is not as controlled. I mean, they could move the knight and play bishop here still. That is true. So if we go bishop f4, we are attacking this. So what do they do in that case? Do they go d5? Okay, but if they go d5, position's opening up and they're not really ready for it, right? So like takes and takes. Yeah, that just wins a pawn immediately. So on bishop f4, do they have anything else or, or what? I mean, knight f6 guards it, but then e5. Then we can play e5. Yeah, e5, and then if they do take, then the bishop is pinned and stuff. This feels like the correct path to me. So I'm going to play it. It's also a pretty normal normal move, so it's desirable in that sense. Proves our position. Okay, so they went here. But I wanted to provoke this because now... Now they've weakened the d5 square and their d6 square is backwards more permanently. It'll be much harder to get d5 now. So what do we do? I think we just go bishop e3 here. That's what I'm thinking. I think I like bishop e3 a lot because after knight d5, we're possibly getting into these squares over here. Those are looking pretty weak, so let's just play this and see. They'll probably play knight f6, which is just a normal move. Well, they can't, right? We just win it. No, we don't win. I was thinking my knight's on d5. It is not. So after knight f6, if I go knight d5 and they do take it, hmm, kind of happy to see that. Pinning the knight makes some sense, doesn't it? I'm already seeing a line like, like here, knight f6, take, take, and then take. They can't take back because they're pinned, so. Definitely the move I'm considering. I could also pull back to b3. Since there's no knight g5. No, no, this move's more patient. And actually we have a more positional Mora now. Since we've achieved this, we can play positionally now. Um, does this actually work? Knight f6, take, take. I think it does. Take, 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 and they cannot take back, right? But what they could do is play here, attack my knight. I play knight d5 again. Oh, and that would block it. Okay, I like it. I'm playing it. I have a feeling that this immediately is a bad idea. Okay, but I can take the knight and take on an e5, and 
get our palm back with a better structure. Yeah, they'll be left with this deep pawn. We give them the two bishops, but um, seems pretty reasonable to me. Well, if they take with a rook, I guess we don't want the pawn, right? I just realized that. Like if take, take. I don't think I have anything. So they stopped our idea. That was not nice. Yeah, I only calculated knight f6. I didn't even look at rook c8. But they have two more moves before they castle. So actually, I should have looked for more forcing continuations. If I was looking for stuff. I don't know. Um, didn't quite, quite see anything. At least not on the queen side. I feel like the king side, I don't really have pieces over there. So it's like, and there's no knight g5. So I don't see an attack really. I think my play is in the center and on the queen side for now. And I want to try to um I want to try to play with the initiative because they need time to develop. Okay, so they do play this. Now if I take here and they take with a rook, is there a downside to that? Because I mean there is. That's where the bishop wants to be. But the bishop's not so bad on d7. Has a diagonal, you know, controls things. So now I could play knight g5, but then they just castle, and then I'm like, yeah, why'd I do that? And I don't see a point to it otherwise, so. I'm tempted to take, but is there any other way I can improve my position? I think I just play h3 now, just stop stuff coming to g4. So I'll just do that. They're probably going to castle, but okay, we've achieved this structure. We're just going to play positionally now. I don't think this is a threat. I was looking at this with discoveries, but like what discovery? They don't really have anything. Like if they go here, I mean, I don't see the big deal. Yeah, I think that's correct, castle. Um, I might just play a3 and stop this thing. Then again, I want my knight on a5, I think. Because I control b6, I could hop in one way or another, like I was saying. So I don't think I want, I need to stop that move. Um, so this is defended only once. Could I attack it again? That is a question I have. What if I like double on the D file? Kind of makes sense. It seems like a pretty natural plan. Again, taking here, they can take with a rook, is the thing. That's what I don't like about it. I, mean, I don't see a way to exploit that. <laughs> I could be wrong, but I don't see a way to exploit it. Okay, let's just say they take with a rook and I play knight d5. Let's just go with that for a second. Um, if they take here... I take, and I don't know, I'm not as excited about that. Um, yeah, I just, it's not that great. 
it's not that great. All right, I think I'm just gonna double. I'm just double checking to make sure that I just have to keep an eye on my e pawn, right? Because they can kick the knight and take the e pawn, but at least for now, it's protected by the bishop. And um, if they take, then they're not attacking the e pawn. So I think we're good there. Pretty excited for the Kings Island Open. I've got uh, four of my strong students coming. Uh, shout out to my students, Sophia, Olivia, Jacoby, Matt, and Victoria. <laughs> Very happy we will be together and playing chess. I'll be, of course, cheering for you. It's slow time control. We'll have time to think about our moves and prove a chess, which is, of course, the main idea. Okay, what is this? What are they doing here? This doesn't feel like a real move. I could be wrong. Um, so they open the C file. They want to play bishop C6 most likely. Um, but the knight's literally doing nothing. So, Right? Like it's doing nothing. He could take my bishop. Yeah, maybe he just wants to trade everything. Like, take, take, take. And then here attacking a rook if it comes. I think that's the idea there. So, I'm actually looking at this move. The problem is, they can go here and I actually can't take here. But I could counterattack this move. And then if they take, I would take. Which is interesting, gotta say that. I don't feel like it's great for me or anything. And if I go here, are they gonna go d5? I think I should retreat. And if they go here, I play a3. And I'm also then on their b5 pawn and, wow, what did, did I miss something? What did I miss? My rook's hanging, great. Okay, but I have an interesting, um, I have this interesting move, which attacks them. If they take here, I will take there. And if they take me, I take here. And then on bishop c6, what do I do? Eh, if I go here or something. Yeah, I probably should have seen this though. That was a pretty um, bad oversight on my part. Does it just lose the exchange though? Because if it does, this might actually be a good move. I'm not sure. Let's just say takes, check. And I go here and takes. Takes. Nah. So if I go here, though, they attack my queen, right? So I would have to take. I think it's my best try. I'm going to play it. Uh, I have to play in blitz mode now. 
you know what, for all these uh, deep strategical ideas I, I am <laughs> going for and stuff, like, if I just miss something stupid like that, then it's all for nothing. So I think when I play rapid chess, I think I really need to just follow my instincts immediately and then just make sure I'm not blundering things. Like that's really, should be my focus. And I, I bet you I would score a lot better. Okay, he goes there. I think, hmm, actually pawn takes is interesting. I will say that pawn takes is quite interesting, but not that interesting because after takes we take and then they would take here. So let's get rid of the vulnerable rook. <laughs> But wait, I just messed up. I messed up bad. Jeez. Well, I'm not sure about that because I have knight takes e5 as a move. All right, let's follow my instincts. I haven't been trusting myself lately, and I think it just makes me play worse. So let's trust myself. I got this. I mean, they kind of have to take, because I will take there with a fork. Which is why I didn't trade rocks. And it's a discovery on the bishop. So that's the main idea, clearly. Um, I'm also dying to like hit F7 or H7. So if I get to keep this bishop which seems likely I can kick this knight out and do stuff like this. Just, you know, make the, make the battery, the standard battery. It will apply pressure. I'm not sure how much it will do though, honestly. But I mean, we're, we're definitely losing. This is desperate. So after pawn takes, can I play queen takes? It's like both bishops are hanging at that point. It's like after pawn takes, queen takes. And my queen is more centralized. but maybe they have something like this and then I take and they have discoveries. So I'm not sure I should do that, but I mean, how do you not take the knight? Imagine they're gonna take the knight. What other move are they considering here? I'm actually wondering, like, 
Okay, did the verse. Interesting. I feel like night takes up seven. There's a move. Or wait, just bishop takes as a move. Bishop takes, bishop takes, and let's fork. We take our knight, we attack. They attack our, I mean, attacks the knight too. So I think just here, here, and here. Oops. So I would do it. If to go here first, we throw in this move, right? Check. Okay. That just guarded, so I think it's fine. Hey, it, feel, it psychologically feels good. I don't know if I'm actually doing well or not. I also have this now, which I didn't see, but that's a nice little uh, benefit. That could potentially fork these two pieces, but after here, here. So they would need to trade rooks first, because if they don't, in that position, they'll be in trouble, right? Like check here, and then I take. That's not so good for them. In the meantime, they have to move their queen, so. Where's that queen going, do you think? Queen d8? Mm-hmm. Do I take here or take there? Honestly, I think I took an F8. Or even better, I just check. I'm hoping they take with the queen. Wow, they took with the king. Okay. Now I have this move if I want it. And, um. I honestly think I should do it because uh, G1's not so great. Okay. If they go there. Definitely take. Like we're very close to meeting. Close, 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 but not quite there, I don't think. Yeah, we just play a3 and win that. Okay. I mean, only move, right? If they go here, that's ridiculous. Oh, they did that. That's interesting. I did not see that coming. But it doesn't feel right at all. 
Like now I've taken them on that, right? So. <laughs> I'm just going to follow my instinct on that one. Okay. A knight is guarding it. Again, I'm following my instinct to save time. Where's the night going? I guess there. That seems best. And then I was thinking we take. And uh okay, they checked us. Okay. Well now this is like a real thing. So maybe I just go G3. Does this work or not? Let's see. Seems okay to me. Their knight is still hanging. They'll have to guard this check because um, it has to be guarded with the queen because this is pinned. So when I take there, that becomes like a thing. Things are good. <laughs> Um, there, huh? And then I do not want to trade, so. Knight's still attacked. They actually took the best square from the knight away now. Ooh, they could play this. Well, I'm guarding it. Okay, never mind. <laughs> um, they kind of screwed their night. <laughs> they really screwed their night. I could also do this if I was super greedy. Oh my gosh, do I have Rook C3? Rook C3, if they push, I take the queen. The bishop's pinned, right? This looks good. I'll play it. <laughs> Feels like I'm winning, but... I mean, we also get this check now. Well, actually, I'll check with a rook. This seems, um... Quite good. I mean, we're winning material here. That's a winning move, I think. Rook c3. So they missed it. Where's their queen gonna go? Their queen went nowhere, counterattacked. Okay. Tick, 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 tick. 
free night. <laughs> Go with that. I'm probably going to take my rook. Okay, then they can take. Let's go here. They can play for the end game, but we're up material. Um, yeah, I'm giving them pawn, but I don't know. Like, it's mate. I have to go here. I hope I'm not missing something. Grab that pawn. Now I can't. Grab this. Wait, that's just mate. It's mate in two. Oh. Queen defense. Queen cannot leave the bishop, that's for sure. Queen d6 check there. That wins. I'm not material, so I do I don't think I should trade the bishop, uh the rook for the bishop. Which probably sounds obvious to a lot of people, but I always sack the exchange. <laughs> so, um, but I think in this end game, I mean, two pa two connected pass pawns. I don't want to give them up. I don't want to take the bishop. So, what are they going to do here? That's my question. They could try something like this. I mean, if they just do that, I just play checkmate. So, I don't know what they do. If they do nothing, I play check. And they can't even do that because it's pinned. Yeah, so I thought here, I go here, right? Let's take it. Okay, we got this. Good game. They're probably not happy, <laughs> uh, especially if it's a kid. Okay, so I have to use the bathroom, so I guess we'll end the video here. I mean, you guys don't like super long content anyway, <laughs> from what I could tell. So I'll be back with the analysis of the game. Um, I hope that you enjoyed it. And uh, I know I did, right? Like Smithmore Gambit. I'm just tearing people up with this Smithmore Gambit. But then again, I don't think I'm playing it well, necessarily. I think that uh, we're all messing up in the end, <laughs> like in the middle and the end is the reality of it. But I took my chances when I had them. So you know, we'll go with that. See you next time. Bye. <laughs>